What's going on, guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. It is Monday, April 1st, 2024, and I have an emergency update to share with you guys. Right now, it is 2208 Eastern Time here in the United States. I wanted to just update you guys on the situation with the Iranian consulate that was leveled by the Israeli Air Force in Damascus, Syria earlier today. So what you're looking at here is some footage coming in from this evening, and you can see the entire consulate is basically flattened out. There's nothing left. And the Iranian foreign minister said that Iran has sent an important message to the U.S. after the Israeli attack on Iran's consulate. We don't know what that message is. And the Iranian foreign ministry sent a letter to the UN Security Council stating that Tehran reserves the right to take countermeasures and make a similar response to the Israeli attack. Okay, so that is very, very concerning. So Iran may launch some kind of strike against Israel now. And the Iranian ambassador to Syria said that Iran's response will be harsh. Okay, so get prepared, guys. This is very, very serious. Iran is planning to launch some kind of counter attack against Israel after this. And Iran also warned the United States through the Swiss embassy in Tehran that it would hold the U.S. responsible for this strike as a supporter of Israel. So they're blaming us for this. They're saying they're going to retaliate with harsh responses. This is extremely serious. And we know now that the top three IRGC generals that were in charge of operations for the IRGC in Syria and Lebanon died in this strike. Okay, so their top three IRGC generals responsible for coordinating with Hezbollah, with all the Iranian proxies in Syria, have been eliminated in this strike. And Iranian media has confirmed that the top commander of the Quds force in Syria and Lebanon and his deputy were killed in this attack. His name was Mohammed Reza Zahedi. Let me show you guys a picture of this guy right here, okay? So this is extremely serious. Hezbollah has released a statement regarding today's airstrike, and they said, certainly this crime will not pass without the enemy receiving punishment and adequate revenge. And I reported earlier that Israel has put their entire military on high alert, and we're hearing this evening that Israel has raised the state of alert for their army in the Golan Heights and along their northern border with Lebanon. We have the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs saying that Israel's attack on the Iranian embassy could lead to war. And the Pentagon has decided to extend the stay of the Dwight Eisenhower aircraft carrier and associated ships of the Eisenhower Carrier Group in the Middle East. This is being reported by NBC. So the U.S. is now extending the Dwight Eisenhower and its associated ships in the Middle East. That is a sign that things are about to get serious. We know that the Israeli Defense Minister, Yoav Gallant, went to Washington last week, and he met with all of our senior defense officials here in the U.S., and they were talking specifically about the uh, and they talked specifically about the Rafah operation and what targets they were going to hit, etc. And then they also discussed the war with Hezbollah. Okay, so Israel is in the planning stages of their Rafah operation, and then also in their Lebanon operation. They're in the planning stages right now. And the Biden administration is considering selling Israel up to 50 new F-15s and 30 AIM-120 AMRAAM missiles. 
This was reported by Politico as well as a bunch of JDAMs, okay? 50 more F-15s, guys. That is huge. 50. That's a lot of fighter jets. And the U.S. confirmed today that Iranian proxies launched a drone at a U.S. Army garrison in southern Syria today, and it was shot down. This is the first time in a while since late February that Iranian proxies have launched an attack on a U.S. facility in the Middle East. And we had some interesting activity over the Israeli nuclear facility, Demona. Here we have an Italian light fighter jet. This is actually a jet that they used to train with, and it was patrolling over the Demona research facility. If you don't know what the Demona facility is, that's where Israel's nuclear weapons program originated from. So it looks like they were potentially patrolling this facility, maybe to protect it from drones or missiles if they try to target it. And here we also have an Israeli reconnaissance plane that was patrolling around the Demona facility. And before I continue with the breaking news, I want to just ask you guys a quick favor. One of my subscribers, her name is Ingrid. She has two daughters. She's been out of work for the last three weeks because her computer broke. And as a result, she fell behind on her rent and she's running out of money for food and gas. So if you guys could check out her GoFundMe page, if you feel led by God to donate, please do so. I'm going to leave a link to her GoFundMe in the comments section down below and also in the description below. So please help her out. She's behind one month on rent and she has two daughters. One of them is 16 years old and she works very hard. It's just that her computer got messed up and she couldn't work for like a whole month and she fell behind on her bills. So she just needs enough to be able to pay her rent and have a little bit of money for food and gas. So I'm going to leave a link to her GoFundMe in the comments and in the description. And thank you guys for your help. And we currently have a lot of U.S. reconnaissance activity in the Baltic region. Here we have a P-8 Poseidon patrolling off the coast of Kaliningrad, looping right off the coast of Kaliningrad. This is a Russian province sandwiched between Lithuania and Poland. And just the other night, we had a lot of activity in this same area. So this is the second night in a row that the U.S. has sent a P-8 right off the coast of Kaliningrad. So this is very, very concerning. This is a sub hunter plane. They also have other uh, reconnaissance equipment on board those planes. We currently have a US RQ-4 Global Hawk that just finished this huge patrol over the Black Sea, keeping an eye on Crimea. So something could go down in Crimea soon. And North Korea on Tuesday test fired a suspected intermediate range ballistic missile towards waters off its eastern coast. South Korea's military said South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said the missile was launched from an area near the North Korean capital Pyongyang, but it did not immediately confirm how far the weapon flew. And the Japanese Self-Defense Force scrambled fighter jets to intercept a Chinese reconnaissance plane on Monday. The Y-9 electronic intelligence gathering plane was circling around Okinawa. Okay, that's a major U.S. base there in Okinawa and lots of Japanese equipment there. So that's very concerning. And here we have a U.S. nuclear war command and control plane that's up in the air this evening over Oregon. And earlier today, we had another nuclear war command and control plane off the coast of Florida. And we also had a nuke sniffer plane airborne over Nebraska. I don't know if that's related to this uh, missile test that North Korea just did. And the FBI headquarters in Atlanta was attacked by a car. The car tried to drive through the main gate the driver was arrested and is now undergoing a mental evaluation. And at this point, the FBI is not ruling out terrorism just yet. So that's pretty concerning. 
But that's some of the latest breaking news that I have. I will be back tomorrow with more updates. So make sure you're subscribed. Hit the bell icon down below so you get notified when I post these updates. And just get prepared, guys, because we have a lot of things going on. We have the Middle East with Israel and Hamas. And then soon it's going to be Israel and Hezbollah, which is going to be absolutely crazy because Hezbollah is going to launch thousands and thousands of rockets at Israel every single day. There's going to be power outages in Israel. It could escalate to a regional war. We have the situation with Iran and this consulate that was hit by Israel, and they're vowing harsh responses. Okay. So it's going to really escalate in the Middle East. And then, and then we have the situation in Europe with Russia and Ukraine, which is going to escalate this summer. Russia is going to send a massive force into Ukraine to try to break through the lines and potentially go after Odessa or Kyiv. Ukraine has been frantically fortifying Odessa, Kyiv, and Dnipropetrovsk with thousands and thousands of anti-tank obstacles. And the West is still dilly-dallying, not giving Ukraine what they need. Too little, too late, as always. And Russia is in a wartime mode. Their entire economy has gone into wartime production. They're pumping out artillery shells and missiles every month, and we don't have anything. Okay, so it's not looking good for Ukraine, unfortunately, because the West dropped the ball. Okay, and now Russia is going to set its sights on the Baltics and possibly other parts of Eastern Europe. Okay, he's not going to stop in Ukraine. Ukraine is just the beginning, it's just like Poland for Hitler. Okay. When Hitler took over Poland, he didn't stop at Poland. Poland was just the first test for him. He wanted to see if he could go to Poland and if the rest of the world would do anything. And he saw that they didn't do anything. So then he went after France and then the rest of Europe. And we know how that turned out. And that's the same thing that's happening now in Ukraine is that Russia attacked Ukraine, took 20% of their land, annexed it, and we haven't done anything about it except put sanctions on Putin, which hasn't done anything, okay? We have multiple missiles flying into Poland now. Almost every time there's a missile attack on Ukraine, these missiles fly into Poland and they're not getting shot down because NATO is telling Poland you can't shoot them down because that's going to escalate and Russia is going to use nuclear weapons, okay? So we're in a bad situation right now, okay? Russia has the momentum we don't. Okay. And this is very, very dangerous because Russia is going to build up their capabilities more and more and more. Okay. As they take more land from Ukraine, their army gets better. They get more experience. They learn how our equipment operates because we sent all our best equipment there. So they know now what the weaknesses are, how to attack our Abrams, how to attack the leopards. They know everything. They've learned about our equipment now. So now it's going to be much easier for them to attack the Baltics or Poland or some of these other countries. Guys, NATO is useless without the United States. OK, Germany has no army. France has no army. The UK has no army. All they have is fighter jets and nuclear weapons. And if we're talking about a conventional war, we're not just going to nuke Russia okay, or even use tactical nukes because then it would escalate. We don't have conventional forces in Europe, guys. NATO is totally reliant on America's conventional forces to defend the Baltics. And Belarus and Russia, I'm telling you guys, they're making a move. They're going to go after the Baltics, I think. And it could happen very soon, simultaneously, when Ukraine gets attacked in this new offensive by Russia, by hundreds of thousands of Russian troops. Okay, so get prepared. I'm going to continue to monitor this situation and I will update you guys. So until tomorrow, take care, God bless, and don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere. And this update was sponsored by My Patriot Supply. Guys, My Patriot Supply has brought back their 25% discount on their three month emergency food supply. And to get the discount, you got to use the link preparewithnyprepper.com. And the link is in the description below this video. But this three month emergency food supply has a 25 year shelf life. 
It includes over 2,000 calories per day. Breakfasts, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks all contained within six rugged water-resistant buckets, and free shipping is included. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get $200 off or 25% off of the My Patriot Supply three-month emergency food supply. The link is in the description below this video. Free shipping is included. They also have a general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products, and they're always running various discounts. And to get to their general store, you just got to click on the My Patriot Supply logo when you get to preparewithnyprepper.com at the top of the page, and you'll see their general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products, and they're always running discounts here. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get 25% off of the My Patriot Supply three-month emergency food supply, and the link is in the description below this video.